so much for coming to see us. Wow, this is fabulous. Well, take some old friends in this audience and some new friends, and we are just thrilled to death that you came to the heart of the heartland, perhaps from a long way away, and to be with the resurrected Doug and Julie, my God. <laughs> anniversary party and then it was photographed at one time that the Los Angeles Times covered the days of our lives anniversary party which we considered yep. a big deal and it I was, was quoted in the it society section and I, okay. I love the dress because of that and the other is a pearl gown uh, that was made in India and I've also worn that one on the show coming down the staircase you know Marlena's wonderful apartment yeah. whose apartment did that used to be yours Exactly. Well, how times change. Anyhow, <laughs> that gown was the, the, the very spirit of the apartment. Can you see Sandy right there? I can't see Sandy. You know I'm coming up. Hey! And, uh, and Helen, oh God, oh God, oh my God. Oh, this is nice. Thank what a party. you, Kentucky. Yes. She used to live in California and regrets having made the move, but she's in Kentucky now and they occasionally see each other when she comes out to the West Coast. And she's a very particular dear friend. I will not say I have any old friends. No, I do. We have friends in this room and they all look beautiful to me. Right. Johnny Howard and uh, I have known each other for a long time. Yes. Well, Okay. We have a, we have something to put together for you that is so special. Susan and I have about two years ago started uh, working on cruises, and we put together several presentations to do on the cruises. And the, the Crystal Line is what we have worked on, and it's a beautiful ship. And they want their shows, their presentations, to be 45 minutes long. Exactly, 45 minutes. So because right after your lecture, they start the afternoon movie. <laughs> and even if there are 100 people for your lecture and two people for the movie, you're out. Because they they like to keep their schedule nice and tight. So this is a 45-minute presentation. presentation. I'll tell you about the others. 
Uh, I was on your show of shows back in the 50s, and I do a presentation called The Music on Your Show of Shows. People will remember, of course, that Sid and Imogene and Carl and Howie and, uh, and all the others uh, did the comedy that was just fantastic. They remember the comedy. They don't, don't really remember that there was just as much music as there was comedy. And so I do two presentations of that, part one and part two. And we also have one other one, which is about early television, we call Masters of Live TV. We talk about very early television, when it's Very, started. the Stone Age of television. And, and, and there are lots of clips of Bill in it. <laughs> that's true. Now that I think of it. Yes, yeah. well, television really started in uh, September 1948, when Milton Berle did the first episode of his uh, Texaco Star Theater. And so we show, there were only kinescopes made of those, there was no tape at that time. So uh, films of the actual shows that appeared on were called kinescopes, and uh, we have some copies of those. Anyway, the, from 1948 to 58, it was all live, so we showed that. Anyway, that's three of them. And the fourth one is, Susan does one that we call the Golden Days of Soaps. Oh. And that's what we're going to let you see tonight. And, and on, this, on this particular cruise line, uh, they were happy to book Billy, and they said you can bring along, a, a, you know, you can bring along a guest. And we said, well, the guest would like to do some, I could talk about something. And they said, what? And Bill said, no, no, no. so I'll talk about soap opera. And there, there was a big pause because they weren't sure that any of their guests would be interested in soap opera. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, they are. But this, this presentation, the, the tapes that, that uh, Susan includes, uh, it, it's, it's so good that you, Well, don't say it. Don't say it. They'll be fine. Okay. They'll leave the lights and in that case, you still get the cheese toast, whether you like the show or not. <laughs> so, what is this everybody's drinking? What is this? Is this a gelatin? It is a candle. It's a candle. Oh, I thought everybody was drinking. So you can chew on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can knock it over. Hot stuff. That's a, that's a very nice souvenir. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're going to get the lit tonight. No, no, no. <laughs> Now well, let's see, Bruce. Where should we? Uh, where, where should we, we put Susan? Where's our podium? Put Susan way up there. Okay. Up the okay. <laughs> Us? I'm going to stand back here and watch. Hi. Oh, I do recognize many of you on the sweet. <laughs> You're going to be. Oh my goodness. Sweetheart, you don't know. I, I have in my hand a copy of the Ballad of Davy Crockett. You do? An original, uncirculated An original. ballad? Wow. Maybe a little bit scratched. Born on a mountain top, Tennessee. Green estate in the land of the free. Raised in the woods of the new ever tree. Killed him a bar when he was only three. Everybody! Okay, just one last question. Has my brother Bill been wandering amongst you? There he is. There's, there he is. And the gentleman has with him a stylish little bag. And in the little bag are the little raffle tickets. And if you would be interested in purchasing a raffle ticket for the dresses and the Bill Hayes tie, um, he'll pass among you directly after we finish the lecture and he'll be delighted to, to answer any secret questions about our lives. But you may as well just be upfront about it and ask us directly, because otherwise it just leads to gossip and talk. I think we ought to put the lights down. Oh, now, is that down enough for you, Billy? <laughs> I think we ought to put the lights down. <laughs> Bruce, are we ready to roll? I believe so. Okay, don't, okay, don't start yet, Bruce. Okay, oh, don't start yet, Bruce. Okay, usually, uh, this is how it works on the, on the, uh, 
when we do this in a different kind of a room, uh, someone introduces Susan C. Forte. So Billy, would you okay. go ahead? Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Miss Susan Seaforth Hayes. Thank you. Thank you for your applause. I don't deserve them. But then again, I have hammered toe, and I don't deserve that either. My title is The Golden Days of Soaps. Golden Days because there once was an era when soaps dominated the popular imagination, made more money for the networks than their nighttime product, and were taken seriously as socially relevant. That was during the late 70s and early 80s. It was also a golden age because I was working a lot. <laughs> and any sensitive person knows that the time when they were young was the greatest time to be alive. As I'm sure you know, soap operas, radio, and television continuing dramas are called soaps because originally they were sponsored by soap manufacturers for the stay-at-home ladies audience. And operas, well, their themes are life and death, love and passion, in higher keys and faster tempos than life naturally seems to go. Personally, I have performed on General Hospital, The Young and the Restless, Days of Our Lives, even Sunset Beach. My mother has written for soaps for over two decades, and I married my daytime acting partner. I have been working in that. the brightest moment in my career. I have been a working actress for over 54 years, but I think the 36 years that I've spent in daytime TV have marked me. I really do. I, I think I know its underbelly very well. But let's discuss its ideals. The story. The story is everything. Actors come and go, but the daily hook to keep you returning is all. Plots are driven by emotion rather than logic. And you, the audience, are expected to feel more than you think. If you do not cry at least twice a week over something other than the commercials, then the show probably is going to be canceled. <laughs> Wit, class, beauty, intrigue, they all have their place. But nothing grabs you like loving the characters which is where good actors make their impact and a star like Susan Lucci has a value above rubies. And when do you feel the most for a heroine? On her wedding day. <laughs> Erica, Miss Lucci, has been hitched seven times. But let's talk some more about me. <laughs> Weddings are usually the audience's payoff for a long storyline. Cinderella gets her prince after countless ups and downs, years of waiting, and the kind of stupid mistakes that nobody in this audience would ever make. <laughs> so I'm starting off with a tape of my own wedding on Days of Our Lives to my husband in real life, Billy Hayes. Uh, we met on the show. After four years, we wed. Our characters had much greater obstacles to overcome. <laughs> And they waited almost seven years. In fact, they waited until the network said yes. Um, the year is 1976. The text is biblical. It came from our own ceremony that we put together and uh, took place in our own living room. Now, fans, I guess that's you all. Sure. They tend to get carried away by these, uh, these events. They stage receptions sometimes. Sometimes we even receive wedding presents. Uh, whoever gets married, it doesn't really matter. You just love the catharsis of it all. So let's see how the picture looks, Bruce. It'll take just a moment because I didn't cue it up, but it will get there. How many here saw our wedding? 1976? That <laughs> uh, was a big one. Dearly beloved, we 
here gathered here in the presence of God, unite this man and this woman in the holy marriage, which is instituted of God, regulated by his commandments, blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, and to be held in honor among all men. Let us therefore reverently remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree ripeneth her green figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth their fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following him after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear these uh, 
these murmurs of approval when the cast pictures come up. It, it, uh, rather than presenting this to a group, room full of strangers, this just makes I know how I feel about all these people as they come up on screen. It's wonderful to be in the room with you. During my formative years in daytime, I once was a young actress. <laughs> I was. And <laughs> I noticed the teenage storylines only flourished during summer vacations when whippersnappers were enticed to look at their peers on TV. <laughs> every age group used to have stories to tell. Every age group had plenty of air time. <laughs> That's changed, of course. <laughs> youth, youth with all its gusto and grit gets the glory now. But even by the mid-1980s, anyone past 25 was considered past it by the writers. So, as a woman of a certain age, I found myself repeatedly cast as a powerful older woman in suits, always in search of romance, but due to her great age, <laughs> forced to pay for it. You know, soap opera writers tend to age characters very quickly. They say it's to take advantage of story potential. Once in 1975 on days, my eight-year-old son, David, went off to summer camp. He was an adorable Cub Scout of about eight. He came back that September, six foot two, lantern-jawed ego, played by an actor 30 years old. I was 33 that year. Moving right on. In this tape, I'm on The Young and the Restless, a show you may have heard of. You may never even have heard of it. Uh, doing a scene with my daughter, played by the lovely actress Tracy Bregman, child of Buddy Bregman, the famous musical conductor, who also began her soap opera acting career on Days of Our Lives, playing Jed Allen's daughter. In private life, we loved each other, we supported each other's choices of, oh, streaked hair, big earrings, and lip gloss. But in this scene, we are fighting about a man, of course. Bruce? Now, finally, my career has blossomed. You know how wonderful it feels to be at the top of your field, but darling, it's not enough for a woman. Enter Mark Bergeron. I wish I could make you understand how he makes me feel. Alive! He's someone to talk to and be with and care for. And we share things, our hopes and dreams. He is my friend. He's my confidant. He is there for me. And someone to sleep with. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful beside me in the night. Lauren, it is so much better than all the years of loneliness. You don't think he's interested in your money? No, I don't. Even if he is, even if he takes every last penny, I don't care because he's given me something that's so much more important. Only for a little while. Mark has made me feel that I'm loved. <laughs> Truly, she was a writer on uh, The Young and the Restless for nine years. Disaster! <laughs> Disaster is the stuff of drama. <coughs> and through thousands of episodes, I have shared in many. Most vivid was when my own mother was made head writer of Days of Our Lives. <laughs> she is very talented. She did a remarkable job. But her storyline for me was, to set fire to my face, have me lose my sanity, 
divorce my wonderful husband, and go live in a badly furnished apartment. I had to wonder how I failed as a daughter. But NBC thought this was great stuff, so I started asking about that artificial fire that I had seen in movies all my life. Picture my surprise on learning it's real fire, and I would have to be torched briefly to shoot the sequence. <laughs> My double and I both wore fireproof bodysuits and lots of fire retardant, but when you're lit up, if you burn for more than 25 seconds, you begin to cook in the suit like a steamed pudding or a custard. <laughs> so, normally, a work day of, on a work day, about 10 people are standing around on the set. But the day that they set me on fire, about two dozen showed up, and I hoped it was for moral support because I really was scared to death. Um, Suzanne Rogers, a redhead that perhaps you know very well. Uh, <laughs> Suzanne Rogers puts me out, and she was also a nervous wreck, and she was also drenched in retardant and scared to death her hair would catch on fire. So, events follow in typical soap opera fashion. So get a load of the plastic surgery. Bruce, please roll the tape. Faye, this used to be Maggie's old farmhouse. Oh, completely, God. Is 
came over to talk me into having another skin graft. Good. That's right. You heard right. I'm glad they did that because friend. I'm on their side. I'm sorry, but you know, I wouldn't be honest with you and I wouldn't be your friend if I said otherwise. I want you to have that operation. This is a, a pure entertainment medium and fantasy and uh, escape. And that particular storyline went on for so long and I was depressed doing it and I wondered if it was to any good purpose at all. And Billy and I were doing a telethon shortly after the close of the storyline in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. A beautiful young mother and her little daughter came up to me and said, I want you to meet this lady and I want you to meet my little girl and I want to thank you. I said, well, why is that? And she said, well, some years ago, a couple of years ago, my daughter was very seriously burned and they told us that she would have to have skin grafts and she didn't understand and she was very frightened and she didn't want to go through with the surgery. And we were watching Days of Our Lives together, and we watched that storyline, and we decided it would be okay for her to have the surgery. The little girl was very beautiful and just fine. So it made me feel tremendous. <laughs> Sometimes through this show, you've gotten to do nice things for people that you don't even ever get to meet. My husband. He was the first actor on soaps hired with an eye to using his musical talent. His character of the charming rogue, Doug, acquired a nightclub and had endless opportunities to sing. The songs usually commented on the plots or sometimes even moved them along. All the soaps were copying days with mixed results. <laughs> now, royalties for songs cost lots of moolah. Columbia Pictures owned our show and also owned a music catalog. So we could get Columbia Pictures songs for a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Thrift won the day, and that is why Bill sang The Look of Love to me over 70 times. <laughs> Other choices from this catalog included The Last Train to Clarksville, made semi-popular by the Monkees. Happily, he only sang that once. <laughs> of course, all the fine dramatic actors on our show wanted to strut their stuff too. And finally, Bill and the writers found a logical way to have everybody burst into song at once. This was a long time ago, but it actually happened. The mythical hospital needed to raise funds for a CAT scanner and put on a telephone featuring local talent from Salem. Salem anywhere USA, our mythical town. Your real town, our mythical town. It was such a hit that fans actually called NBC to pledge money for the CAT scanner. <laughs> so we're not going to show endless highlights from this show because Billy and I love it so much. Robert Clary, John Clark, Jed Allen, and Billy will serenade you 
Suzanne Rogers, Emmy winner and former Rockette, will dance for you. And I know nobody remembers this, but somebody resembling me does a strip tease. <laughs> Bruce, go ahead, roll it. I don't care what happens. <laughs>
Those were the glory days. <laughs> when Days of Our Lives was looking for a masterful father figure to build the show around, McDonald Carey, movie star and father of many, was looking for work. His wonderful acting and charm anchored the fledgling black and white half hour and made millions of fans for Dr. Tom Horton, his character. I played his granddaughter, and he truly did watch over me, giving great advice and introducing me one faithful rehearsal to the man I would marry. Mac was a drinker in those days. He struggled to learn dialogue. He'd often shake like a leaf when the camera's red light went on. Then came AA and a return to his Catholic faith. He conquered the booze. He blossomed magnificently. He became a published poet after age 60. He collected first editions and he collected people's lives. Mac would always listen to you. He would listen to the longest, dullest life story. He was one of those rare human beings who grows more open-minded with age. Mac passed on about six years ago but his mellifluous bass voice still introduces us and says these are the days of our lives. Mac was also a song and dance man and proud of it. So in this next tape, he's dancing on two artificial hips and he's still pretty watchful of those cue cards, but oh my dear, what a darling he was, what a star he was. Bruce? Chip 
planted in her head with a nasty new identity. It's out, but it still has it. such creativity, you know, it really boggles the mind, doesn't it? So here's a nice new piece of tape starring Christian Alfonso. Ruth, did you know your father's been singing again? Professionally, I mean. Exciting. Just in a few clubs and casinos here and there. He sounds better than ever. I love it when he steps in the spotlight. It reminds me of all the times that he used to sing to you when you were a little girl. At Doug's place. Those times are my favorite memories. <laughs> when he used to look into your eyes and sing to you. You were my inspiration. I've been singing uh, mostly the old songs. Added a few new ones to the act. One I dedicate directly to you. You know what I say to that audience every night? By way of introducing the song? How would I know? Right, how would you know you can't? So I'll tell you. I say to them, I have an exceptional daughter. Not only is she beautiful, she has a wonderful, warm heart, a kind heart. And I tell them, she's the light of my life. Before she came along, I had no real direction. I had no sense of purpose in my life. Being a father to her changed me. Made me want to be a better man. Along with this wonderful lady here who shares my life, I tell them my daughter Hope is the best thing that ever happened to me. one you always dedicate to your daughter. Looking at you now, I don't wonder how you became the lovely girl you are. Cause there's a reason why you're the apple of my eye. You're my hope, my dream, my lucky star. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child. When you were only starting to go to kindergarten, I bet you drove the little boys wild. And when it comes to winning blue ribbons, you must have shown the other kids how I can see the judges' eyes As they handed you the prize I bet you made the cutest bow Oh, you must have been a beautiful baby Cause, baby, look at you now I know you were a beautiful baby I know you were a wonderful child You were only starting to go to kindergarten I saw you drive those little boys wild And when it came to winning blue ribbons you must have shown the other kids how I can see those judges' eyes as they thank the prize. And then you made the cutest bow. Oh, you must have been a beautiful baby. Yes, I know you were a beautiful baby. Cause baby. My baby, oh, oh, look at you now.
I can still see them. <laughs> if I had kept a scrapbook of all the happy times, it would look a lot like the next tape. You'll recognize Ed Asner and Shirley MacLaine at the Emmy Awards when soaps were riding high. And also Ruth Warwick, Orson Welles, Old Flame from Citizen Kane, and the very tall David Hasselhoff, muscular hunk who went on to Baywatch fame. They all represented the great variety of gifts soap actors have presented you, the audience, for over the last 30 years. So the last section is just a potpourri of silly moments, and mostly they were intentional. But not all. Bruce? Julia, amante carissime, my, my most beautiful lover. Uh, questi uomini, these gentlemen, uh, il musicista uh, cavalleresco, the accordionist, e eh, questo cameriere grandiloquente, um, the caterer, yes, uh, stanno qui con me stasera, are here with me tonight, per dare, darte, to give to you una sera d'amore, an evening of love, una cena romantica, a uh, romantic meal, uh, in verità un sogno solo per noi due, a dream just for you and me. Um, la tavola là, per favore, e non dimenticare il vino e i fiori. You have to talk to him like that, you know. We are. I'm here. It's a little wrestling wide. Terrific, I think. Let me tell you, those guys are big. Mrs. Han's not here. I think you're lovely, Jack, at dinner. Mrs. Han's not here? That's impossible. I thought that Julie would... <laughs> lovely Japanese dinner. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure. A great deal, little lady. A great deal. Marty. Thank you, I can Watch it. How come? I don't know. It's a Oh, man, please, if you could just give us a little bit of a handout. My friend and me hate it for hours and hours and hours. Thank you. 
Was this love at first sight? Man, Bill. What do you think? <laughs> I always say to him, remember, darling, I loved you first. Uh, Billy had been married before he met me and had been recently divorced. He'd been married 23 years. And he came out to do Days of Our Lives in order to be working in one place. Well, he had custody of his five children. And he couldn't tour around the country anymore. He had to have a job somewhere. So the somewhere turned out to be Burbank. And we met on the set. And I immediately... And I was dating someone else at the same time, and I finally threw over to someone else who was just a mere newscaster, a mere anchor man, <laughs> when I could have that. And we uh, gradually, very gradually, admitted that we loved each other, but we were friends and co-workers first and really got to respect each other for we that. We got married first. in October 1974. In our and living room. We've been married a long time. <laughs> It's been the best marriage anybody could have. Oh. Fifty-five. That's marvelous. Bill's parents I saw you two in uh, at the Paul University of Greencastle, and I asked a question. At that time, the, the big controversy was whether uh, David was going to have an interracial kiss. Yeah. And so, what do you think now is the um, next? Uh, so the next big thing on soaps. It's hard to find a sexual taboo that hasn't been mounted. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, sex change might be nice. Uh, what would you like to see? What do you think is the current biggest problem short of um, worldwide catastrophe? Would you be interested in seeing more realism or less realism? More fantasy or less fantasy? Let's hear it for fantasy. Let's hear it for stories that might have happened to you and me, otherwise known as reality. stories since I've been to town here in Salem that would be excellent plots. <laughs> that I assure you are quite real and titillating. Shall we say yes? Is there any hope that they'll increase your and uh, storyline? I would uh, seriously doubt it. I would almost guarantee not. We're lucky to be there at all. Uh, we are only there because occasionally we'll have a writer join us who remembers the past or thinks we're not completely useless. Um, when the stories are, are driven by people under 20, it's only who don't ask advice and wouldn't take it if they got it. You know, there's there's not a lot of that, but I'm, I'm happy to be there at all. Everything you're on makes you more enjoyable. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, Billy and I are there together because when I came back in 90 to 93, no Bill. And they never told me why not. And they never explained it to you either. So, I don't know. Yes, ma'am. How's Frances Reed doing? Well, Frances Reed has got a pretty good deal, you know. She's got a, she's got a pacemaker and she had two strokes. Uh, she's the only person that gets driven by limousine to the studio. <laughs> and there's a wonderful lady who uh, collects her and spends all the time with her and brings her her lunch. And if she wants to sit in the makeup chair, by God, she sits in the makeup chair and everybody glares out. And if she doesn't like the way you're reading your line, by God, she'll tell you. <laughs> so I think Francis is doing very well. I think every year it's a little bit harder. Like the, uh, the days winter? are so long in your shop? Take days. No, and like just what, how much uh, 48 hours ago, I saw her do a show where she had to sit on a bar stool at um, the Brady Pub. At the Brady Pub for probably five hours during the tape. 
and she got to get off the stool on a couple of breaks. Okay, and, the and then I have some No, no, I, more. I just couldn't carry more. So. Okay. Getting her up on the bar stool and gave her a little pat on the behind, and she laughed. And, and I thought, what a terribly long day for her. She was fine with it, never complained. I will occasionally see her crumple and then pull herself up for the shot. You know, actors love to be actors. What? And she's well, no. particularly strong. She doesn't have a family at home. So. Yes, ma'am. Billy, the lady over there? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Will they ever do a talent show again? Well, I, w I wish they would because uh, that was such fun. How many people here saw that and remember it today when we did that show? It was, it was such fun. We got wonderful fan mail on that. And, uh, that was 79. I think it was 79. Yeah. Yeah. When my own, but it, it took a lot of pushing to get that produced because when my own mother was the head writer, she didn't want to hear about it. And another writer came on and we auditioned for the head writer. Went into the office and stood around and did our little number and tried very hard. Could I do a number? Would you like to do it? Would you honor us with a number? I think that would be good. I just did a concert with Gogi Grant. Uh, just about two months ago, and for that I put together some songs from the 50s. You know, the 50s it was a good time, and one of the one of the little medleys is is that's okay. That's okay. It's a it's rock songs, and I'd like to do that. Is that okay if I do the rock number? Don't do that. Do one. No. The rock number. <laughs> you just told me you can't do 25 minutes here. Well, of course, I don't want to do 25 minutes. Okay. Two minutes. How about two? Okay, because this this is uh, such fun to do. This is all from the 1950s. We're going to tear down the mailbox, rip up the floor, smash out the windows, and knock down the door. We're going to rock. Rock this joint, we're gonna rock. Rock this joint, we're gonna rock. Rock this joint, we're gonna rock this joint tonight. Well, one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Put your glad rags on, join me, honey. We'll have some fun till the clock strikes and we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock till broad daylight. We're gonna rock, gonna rock around this clock tonight. Well, the one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready. Now go, cat, go, but don't you step on my blue suede shoes. Well, you can do anything to lay off of my blue suede shoes. Well, you can rock it, you can roll it, you can stop or even stroll it and hop, oh, oh, oh. And you can wear stars and feel and you can do the funky chicken and the hop, oh, oh, oh. Do the dance sensation that is sweeping the nation and the hop. Well, here we go. Well, let's go to the hop, bop, bop, bop. 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 Ha 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 Get out of that bed, wash your face and hands. Now get into that kitchen, rattle those pots and pans. Oh, 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 shake, rattle and roll. 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 And you can do anything but lay off of my blue shake. Boom, bobbly, bop, balloon, bop, bam, rock. Midwest.
Graduate of DePaul University. Earned his doctorate in education five years ago, his doctorate. Grandfather of 12. Great grandfather of two. Union member. 77 year old darling, my love building. In two. Okay. And he always wanted to sing more rock and roll. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, yes! Yes. I don't know how I Well, thank you. There are there are um, reasons for not using us a lot, lot more. First reason is the cast list under contract of over 32 people. All of those people have guarantees. I will work one week. I will work two weeks. I will work three shows a week. Um, all of those people are in line ahead of us. We are no longer under contract to Days of Our Lives. So when they think of us, if they have to think of us, they don't have us up on a chart saying, me, 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 me. Give me a job, give me a job, you owe me a job, you've got to write me in. There was a most fascinating article uh, two weeks ago in the New Yorker that was all about the man who writes um, Another World. And it was all about the fact that he came from no background whatever of writing and no background of watching television. And what astonished him most of all was the guarantees that he had to fulfill and all the outs that he had to follow. Well, Christian is pregnant. Christian is going to have a maternity leave. Uh, So-and-so has a vacation coming. So-and-so's uh, child is having its third birthday party. He doesn't want to be here on Thursday afternoon. Thank you. And we're still supposed to have a show. So I think the writers do a bang-up job. And if they forget Doug and Julie, well, who hasn't? <laughs> Yes, ma'am? I was wondering if there's anything like what the tape that you just showed us, is there anything like that that is available to buy? Lorraine, is there anything like that that's available to buy? I don't think so. Uh, it takes, it takes uh, somebody paying for rights to do that. We do not have the right to make copies and sell them. Right. And it takes somebody who would, who would pay, pay for that, that ability. Yeah, as long as we're showing it to friends, that's okay. Yeah, okay. We, we may that's do that. Yes, hi. I have one of your records that I bought, I don't have it years ago. I like that. Yes. It, it was, I ordered it. Uh, it did not, it did come through? <laughs> well, good. Because <laughs> we have a few in the garage at home. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Well, we how many people, uh, how many people, the old timers, is still on this days of our life? What's well, an old timer? Uh, <laughs> Francis Reed. Francis Reed, who plays Alice, was on at the beginning. John Clark who plays Mickey, was on at the beginning. Suzanne Rogers has been on 26 years. Suzanne Rogers has been on a long time. Uh, Deidre Hall, who plays Marlena, has been on a long time. Um, Dee came on in 74, um, I think. Who else? Who else has right. still, been on, still on for, been on a long time? Uh, now, Peter Reckle, and, uh, and Christian Alfonso have been on a long time. They came in the early 80s. That's like 20 years for them. And, and Peter's going to be here. He's a fabulous guy. You Can we tell him. you about Peter Reckle? He always arrives prepared. He always arrives considerate of the older actors and knowing what their uh, foibles are, what their difficulties are, and what their strengths are. He's been very supportive. He's been wonderful with Francis Reed for years. When they had more together, he really held her up in every way. 
Uh, he's devoted to his family. He's devoted to the fans. He's careful about the show. He is good with Christian. They've had their ups and downs. They're on an upswing right now. Uh, we've seen them on a downswing, and it's a pleasure to be around the upswing. Yes, when, <laughs> when, when they first started on the show, they had to find themselves, and they had to find their characters. And they did not really, they had not really matured yet. They both went away for a while, and they both learned something, because when they came back, ever since then, they, if, if one wants to speak about uh, a part of a scene, they'll say, excuse me, wh what would you think of this? They're just so considerate of each other, and so loving. Yeah. It's wonderful to be around. The lady here just asked about Ed Mallory, who used to play Dr. Bill. Well, Ed Mallory's living in Maryland. He married the pretty blonde who was in uh, Standing on the Corner, Suzanne Zenor. They have a beautiful son. He became a director. And you know the show Biography? He's directed many of those. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, um, he's doing fine. Julie's son, David. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandson. Beat me. Oh, I'll tell you, I wrote a, a letter to Tom Lang. And, uh, remember Tom Lang? He was the producer and then he became the writer and the producer simultaneously, which meant that the show kind of produced itself for quite a while. <laughs> well, it's impossible to do both jobs fully. I wrote him a letter explaining about all of my male relatives, and if he cared, there were still a lot of Hortons in the closet that hadn't been trotted out lately. <laughs> All of whom could be Nubial men, which is, this is what Sony thinks is all you're interested in, folks. That's truly, that's truly what NBC and Sony Pictures at the moment thinks is the most important thing in your agenda when you turn on the set. Now that may be true. I don't know. No. 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 I, don't I saw know. Greg Marks just a couple of weeks ago who used to play David Banning. And he hasn't aged one minute. He just is as handsome as ever. Gorgeous. He does voiceovers. What a waste of his beauty because he's doing voiceovers. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Bill, excuse the comment of what you were just referring to. In three years, 55% of the U.S. population will be over the age of 50. Yeah. We as fans have to let the producers know what we want on that show. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And, I hope, and you sincerely hope that they'll listen to you. Yeah. Uh, we are been, so we've been having the ice cream service the last few weeks. The ice cream on Thursday means that we were number one in the 18 to 49 category. Don't mention being over 50. Let it say, oh, I'm over 45, but I'm under 50. Because after 50, the network doesn't care bookus about you. We've got the money. You've got the money, and you're the one that buys products. They haven't figured that out. They Please. still haven't figured that out, which NBC. is why it's American television. You know, there are a few things on it that aren't too good, maybe. <laughs> a few. NBC figures that this is their philosophy, and that's when you'll understand what, what they're doing. They figure that a person who is 50 has maybe 35 years of buying uh, products. But a person of 20, age 20, has 65 years of buying, and that 65 years of buying is going to be better than the 35 years. That's that's why you have stories about the teens and the early 20s. That's that's their philosophy. It has been for about 20 years. However, I'm always so delighted to see the other soaps. The ladies that are nominated for Best Actress invariably seem to be over 40. Uh, and so other soaps give them storylines. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> There's a lady back there, or perhaps it's a gentleman. The hand, it's a hand up, hand up. It's you.
say that to the teenagers when they arrive well, later on this weekend. <laughs> Don't discourage them. They're young, they're full of juice, they're having the time of their lives, and they're giving the best they've got to give you. I don't think they're going to take up as much of the show as they did in the past year. There seems to have been a turning in the road that way. But the, the main focus will forever be on the, on the new generations and not on the generations gone by. Unless they get into death storylines and disease storylines. <laughs> Maybe we don't want to do that either. No. Okay, now, uh, yeah. how about we, the cheese we, toast? <laughs> How about the cheese toast? Yes, um, we are going to. Uh, Aren't you hungry? Stop uh, question and answer at the moment. Um, Bill Asher over here. Do you have a report on? Has, has some. We still have some tickets left. How many tickets do we have left? Enough for everyone. Enough for everyone. Oh. Okay. Okay. What, what What do the tickets cost? Two or five dollars. <laughs> you may purchase one for three, two for five. One for three, two for five for and these fabulous gowns. One fabulous tie and these winter gowns. Now, Susan and I are going to go over to the table over here and we're going to sit and uh, we can talk uh, individually and sign things. There's going to be food. Uh, Lorraine Zanka is over here. The ladies uh, are going to be at these booths, correct? And uh, so get your get your tickets now. So a souvenir of Doug, a souvenir of Julie, big time. It would be nice to have. Probably. Okay. And well, when will we do that? Uh, when will we draw the tickets? Yeah. We'll draw the tickets as soon as uh, Bill Asher feels that it's over. That all have purchased, okay. all ashore that are going ashore. I see a dollar bill. Oh. Hey. I see five. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman here. Okay, but me, now we get to go back and sign autographs. Yes, we'll check. be back at the table over here. And uh, uh, any more yeah. questions for the whole room? No. Yes. No. One more. Lots of questions. Thank you. The days of our lives got screwed over. Why did Days of Our Lives not get any Emmy nominations to speak up? Always. There was no respect to the industry this year. This year. Well, they're dressing. They are dressing.